Hey folks, welcome back to Failure Retirement. So if you watch the other video, you know I filmed this on the same day, same shirt. I just figured I might as well just keep going and just release it at a different time um, before I forget where I left off, right? So anyway, for those of you, if you haven't seen the previous video, go back and watch it. This is just a story about my life the events that shaped who I am today, my career, how I got here. Okay, so where I left off on the first video, I had gotten fired from my second kind of long-term job. I worked for my folks for around seven years total. And this next company I worked for about three, three and a half years total. And they let me go. So what do I do? So I just start looking for work, right? And I made quite a few contacts in that three years or so. And I started hitting up the other little fruit plants. But none of them were really big enough to support a full-time guy. But I was just picking up work from them left and right, like a week at a time, a couple days at a time. I was pretty busy working for them. And then I did take another couple of jobs uh, briefly. Didn't work out. Took one job for a week, spent a week more or less by myself in a shop working for a guy who had all this work for me. And I changed one alternator on one forklift and really cleaned out the shop. I mean, really nice. Cleaned out my service truck really nice. Just had nothing to do. Friday afternoon, I packed up my stuff and left. There was nobody there to even tell him I quit. I eventually got a check for my week in the mail and we just called it square. Anyway, I think I had seven jobs that year. In 12 months, I had seven different jobs. And like I said, I had no loyalty. And it really surprised me how long it would take somebody to make a hiring decision. So anyway, that like I was essentially out of work, side hustle in my way through life for six months or more. And one company I interviewed for called me up, left a message on my phone late on a Friday afternoon, wanted me to be there on Monday. I didn't even really know why. Showed up Monday, went to work. The boss didn't get there for hours. Like four hours later, the boss shows up. Oh, hey, glad you're here. Thank you. I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I here? I showed up. I'm working because you're not here. I got to do something. Oh, so he tells me what he wants, tells me what he's going to pay. I just start packing up. I don't even skip a beat. I don't ask why. I don't protest. I just start loading my tools back in my truck. Pretty quick, he catches on. What are you doing? Like, I'm not working for that. Like, you're, you're crazy. I'm not doing this. Well, needless to say, he eventually upped his offer, and we agreed. Worked there about, I don't know, 15 months, I think. And uh, that boss, well, he ended up going through drug rehab and a couple other unpleasant things in that time. And it was a long commute. I ended up finding a job at a sawmill, uh, the rice mill I was working for. That was like 45 minutes to get there in the morning, an hour to get home with traffic. That wasn't pleasant to me, especially not when you're working 12, 15 hours a day like I was. Not a good plan long term. So I took this job in this rice mill for the same exact money. No responsibility. I had responsibilities at the rice mill. Um, no responsibilities at all in the sawmill. Uh, so I worked there, I think, 60 days. And I wasn't a big fan. It was filthy work. I was used to food processing, which is really pretty clean work. You know, has to be, right? Just a totally different thing. Sawmill, really filthy, hot, dusty. And honestly, the guy who was my boss, I don't know what the deal was, but wow. And I just, it wasn't working for me, right? Basically, I was used to being the foreman, used to being the guy in charge of all the mechanical stuff. I had that at the rice mill. I had that at the fruit packing plant. I had that even with my dad, honestly. 
and trying to work for somebody else with poor decision making is just not not a good thing for failure so an opportunity came up to get into sales and uh, i had actually passed on this opportunity once already uh, because of some other commitments i had uh, but i interviewed for this job in sales um, selling factory automation and so first part of 2000 i landed this job uh, selling rockwell automation if anybody knows what that is um, what I was, I was supposed to sell all electrical products, but I figured out the money was in the automation. So what that means is this is kind of in the early days of touch screens. So we were putting touch screens and the little computers that run them, the computers that control the operation of machinery, um, into the factories. Super cool job. I was really into it. I always had a passion for electricity and the, the parts and pieces that made it work. And uh, so it was just a really good fit for me. It took me a while to get up to speed on having enough personality to be a salesman and understanding that, that job. But once I did, that just took off for me and went really, really well. My job was kind of like that TV show, How Things Are Made. I spent my whole work day going in and out of different factories where they're making all kinds of different things. Some of my former employers were my customers. So I was into fruit packing. I was into tomato canneries. I was in gravel plants. I was in insulation plants, breweries, um, windows, places where they made windows and all sorts of things. And then I also called on the engineers that supported some of those plants built some custom stuff for them it was a pretty amazing job i'm not gonna lie and for a while after i'd had that job a few years i was wanted to be a farmer but i thought it's never gonna happen it's never gonna make sense for me to leave this and start farming it's just not gonna happen it's just not gonna make sense so i worked there and it was a big big global corporate company right global and at first when the economy was good in the early 2000s you know everything was just good but then about 2007 the wheels started kind of coming off the bus and I didn't really see this coming personally but my customers a lot of them were just directly tied to the economy and construction right the gravel plants I went to when the economy blew up in 08 and even really a little before that, they, a lot of them just shut down and same thing with the fiberglass insulation plant, same thing with the window plant. A lot of these places just shut down and not permanently. I believe they're all still in business today, but they'd think nothing to just lock in the gate for three months, six months, whatever. And so like specifically the insulation plant, I sold them $300,000 worth of parts in one year. And the next year I sold them $30,000 worth. That's a pretty serious hit for a full commission guy and for my company. Well, my company is trying to figure out what was wrong. And I was figuring out, you know, the company just kept cutting back, cutting back and inventory was gone till we had nothing left to sell. Well, I had experience starting businesses. I'd already had couple of my own. I help my folks and I'm trying to tell management, you guys can't cut our inventory back. Like I have nothing left here to sell. And I ended up spending way more time trying to help them manage the business than selling, honestly, because of that. And uh, it was tough. And being in sales, it can be, I mean, it's a mental game, right? If you go into the customer and you're on top of the world and mentally you're healthy and strong, you can sell them almost anything. You come in there dejected, you know, a little down on your luck. That customer can smell you before you get out of your truck. They know that. They don't want to buy from you. So it was a tough time, like 2008, 2009, 2007 wasn't great either. And then finally... Um, I pretty much 
they moved some stuff. They closed several stores that I was working for. I was doing outside sales for five stores at one time. Um, started with one and little by little added more stores, more territory. So they called me up one day and uh, I'd been working from home most of the time, but still traveling on the road every single day, going into factories. Uh, but instead of going to the office, they had basically closed my office. And so I was working from home. They called me up and I was out. I had gone out to see a customer. They wanted me to be in the office um, the next day. And I had I actually had sales appointments the next day. And I tried to tell them on the phone, I can't do it. And I can't, I can't go to your your meeting, like, can we do it the following day? I'm going to be in your town where you want the meeting anyway. Uh, but I have to go to these other stores this day. And they said, no, it's, it has to be tomorrow. Well, it didn't take very much of that. The light bulb came on and I just told them, if you're going to fire me, let's just do it this afternoon. Like, what are we waiting for? Oh, no, 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 that's not it. But yeah, we can do it this afternoon. So I go up to the office, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes away from where I was. And, and uh, just so they could have the privilege of firing me in person, I guess. Well, I had already started farming in 2008. And so this is two, two years later in 2010 when they let me go. So it was about as soft a letdown as a guy can have, honestly. I had just told Mrs. Failure like two, three weeks before this that I was going to have to quit one, that I was physically, mentally exhausted. I couldn't continue to do both. I hadn't really made any money farming yet. And this is failure. Oh, God, what are we going to do? we got to have the steady paycheck. I said, I don't know, but I'm going to work for these fools all winter when the farm is slow. But first thing in the spring, I'm going to quit. She's like, oh, my God, like, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out before we get there. Well, two, three weeks later, they forced the issue on me. Worked out, got severance pay. Um, was fortunate that I, because I had the job, I was able to get on Obama's unemployment. The whole thing worked out. I already was farming. The whole thing worked out pretty good. Um, anyway, I think that's probably enough jabbering for one video. Just looking at the clock here. So I think we'll come back for probably a third, that'll probably be the final episode in this series. Uh, we'll come back and talk about, you know, farming on my own, getting started on my own businesses, and then starting other businesses after that, what that looked like. I don't know, might get into a fourth episode on, on the actual retirement piece. We'll just see what the time looks like. Anyway, that's what you can look forward to next time on Failure Retirement. We'll see you then. Have a good day.